everyone, I'm Allie, and I'll be talking to you today about MobX, which is a simple, scalable state management solution. Um, if that sounds familiar to you, that's a good thing, because Redux is also a state management solution. MobX, however, takes an object-oriented oriented approach, whereas Redux uses a functional programming approach. Um, so why might we want to use MobX as opposed to Redux? Well, some people say that it's half the code, but twice the fun. Um, so simple, I can't believe it just works. Um, but really, I think it's important that we keep our options open. In web development, there's never really one right way to do something. And having an idea of what libraries and frameworks and technologies we have um, accessible to us is, is important because then we can find one that works best for our understanding as well as the project we're working on. So let's talk a little bit about how MobX actually works. Um, there's four main concepts. Um, so the building blocks of MobX are actions, observable state, computed values, and reactions. And if we take a closer look at each of these, we have actions, which are a primary means to modify the state. They don't react to state changes themselves, but rather they um, take a source of change, like an on-click or something of that sort, and they modify the observable state. And the observable state is just any value that can be changed and any value that might be a source for one of the computed values. Computed values basically are observables. You just don't mutate them directly. Instead, they're derived or calculated based on changes to the observable values. And reactions are side effects. So they don't actually compute a new value. Instead, they just uh, render um, or make a change to the UI or um, help with console logs, things like that. And a real world example to kind of help you understand this a little better is a spreadsheet. So observable values are any data, uh, data cells that have a value. A computed value would be a cell that has a formula um, that you know, draws on those other data cells. And a reaction would be you know, producing a graph from those values. And then an action would be going into uh, one of those data cells and changing it which would then cause the computed values, those functions to recalculate, and then it would produce those changes on the graph. And then here is just a graphic showing you kind of the, that flow. Um, so events, as an on, like an on-click, as I mentioned before, triggers an action, which modifies the state, which then updates the computed values, and then triggers a reaction. So, here we have an example in code. Um, don't worry about those at observables and, and things yet. Those are uh, function decorators, so if those aren't familiar to you, I'll talk about those in a second. But uh, as you see here, we have a, a class person that has properties, like the first name and last name, which are observables. And down at the bottom, or I guess middle way, line 17, we have a profile view, which is an HTML component, which, as you can see, is an observer, which basically just says, I should be looking at those observable values, and when they change, so should I, or I should re-render. And then uh, the computed value, such as the full name, which just, you'd never need to go in there and mutate that directly, because it just changes based off of first name and last name, and when those change. And then, a reaction is that console log that you can see on line 14, which um, will just print that, that nickname or the full name to the console. One thing to take note of, because we'll talk about this a little more in a second, is the, um, in that, that profile view, you can see that conditional, the props dot, if props.person.nickname, render the nickname, otherwise we'll be rendering the full name. So just keep note of that. So here's a dependency tree, which shows that the profile view is observing the nickname and the full name. The full name is observing the first name and the last name. Um, but MobX likes to 
minimally define those dependencies. So it wants to minimize the number of computations it has to do in order to produce a consistent state. So, for example, when there is a nickname, it knows that it no longer has to look at the full name because it will be rendering the nickname. So we no longer have to compute full name every time first name and last name change, which helps cut, cut back on any potentially expensive computations. Um, and then as I said, um, we talk about function decorators, which are just, a, it's a simple syntax for calling higher order functions. So they're functions that take functions or even values, as you saw in, in the person class, and they just extend the behavior of that function or value as opposed to actually modifying it. Um, but the good thing is that you don't need to know how to use decorators to use MobX. Uh, you can do it all without decorators. Uh, you can see that they're very similar, uh, but for example, with the at action, you're passing the function into action as opposed to kind of labeling that tick function as action. Um, but let me show you an example. So here we have a, um, this will be just a to-do app. It looks a little bit, <laughs> a little bit like this. Um, so, oh. <laughs> So we have this to-do app, and this is the code. Is that visible? Um, so the to-do store is just a class. It has that observable to-dos array, which will hold to-do items or to-do objects, which, as you can see here, are just a, another class that has um, an observable title and a completed, uh, completed value, whether or not it's completed. And also just take note of the add to do function here. As you can see, it's just pushing a new to do onto the store um, directly. So we're mutating the state directly. And we, instead of using dispatchers and action creators and all of that, um, you can just do it right there. And everything is synchronous. So all of those computed values update right away. You don't ever need to worry about having a stale state. Um, and so this, um, if we look at our to-do app, you can see here we have a to-do to entry um, component. And all of these components are just React components like we're used to using, except that we want to make sure that we make them observers so that they know to re-render when those observables change. Um, and so the to-do entry, it's just a form which says that on enter, you want to call this dot props dot to do store dot add to do, which, as I pointed out over here, um, just simply pushes it to the array. And what will happen is when that is, it'll change the active to do count or the completed count depending on um, on how that's marked. And then the progress computed get progress just says how many of the tasks are completed out of the total number of tasks that we have. Um, and so I'll show you how that works and how that just updates automatically. So if we have a to-do, can vote, everyone, yeah? Um, <laughs> and see, now we have this progress that shows up here that says we have zero out of one completed. I already voted today, so <laughs> we can check that off the list. And then, um, we can add something else, like finish presentation, which now I have also done. So that's MobX, and it's just something to consider using on future uh, projects and to take a look into.